Welcome to Tech Tea. Today we're going to discuss variables and macros in the SugarCube story format for the Twine 2 game engine. Some Twine games are perfectly fine with just linking passages together to make simple stories. But this will get very complicated very quickly if you keep making new passages for every possibility. This is where macros come in. Macros are SugarCube's way of adding programming logic to Twine. They let us make all kinds of things from letting the user pick a name for their character to building complex battle systems. A quick disclaimer before we begin. While we will be going over some programming concepts today, this is a Twine video and not a programming video. So we are not going to go in depth into programming concepts today, just how to apply them to Twine. Today we will be making a door that requires a key to open using the three macros I use most often in Twine. Let's get started. The first macro we will cover today is the set macro. This lets us declare variables. Variables store information so we can use it in the future. This information can be any data type that you can use in JavaScript. For now, we're just worried about strings and Boolean values. All you have to do to use a macro is follow the syntax provided in the SugarCube documentation. All macros start with double less than signs followed by their name. After that, you may have options you can give it. We call these arguments. Then we close the statement with double greater than signs. The set macro takes one argument, an expression that establishes the name and value of a variable. Variables come in two types, story variables, which can be accessed globally, and local variables, which are only available to the passage in which they are declared. Global variables start with a dollar sign, but local ones start with an underscore. Let's store the character's name in a variable on our first passage so we can change it easily whenever we want. We'll type the following set p name equal to Bob. You might have noticed a few things. First off, this is a global variable because we have this dollar sign here. Second, I use an equal sign to designate that I'm assigning the value Bob to the variable dollar sign p name. We call this equal sign the assignment operator. Third, Bob is encapsulated in double quote marks. This tells SugarCube that this is a string of text rather than some other programmatic data type. I'll go more into programming concepts behind variables in a future video. But today, let's just demonstrate how this will work. Now that we have our player's name, we can write out the variable name anywhere in our passage and it will display the text stored in it. So in this case, we'll just write out P name is about to embark on a great quest to unlock the door across the room. He just needs to figure out where he put the key. Now if we test it, we shall go to playtest. You'll see it says Bob is about to embark on the great quest. This is because the value of P name is equal to Bob. Now let's try changing Bob to a different name. Let's go with something creative like Rob. And if we test it, you'll see it still says Rob is about to embark on a great quest to unlock the door across the room. He just needs to figure out where he put the key. And if we go to our next passage, you'll see that it's still there. His name is Rob now. This is because it is a global variable. As you can see here, we just typed out P name in our second passage. This is very useful if you have a lot of characters and you can't remember all their names. So you can name your variables like cashier, principal, and things like that. You name them by their roles, so that way you don't have to remember thousands of character names. This is also useful if you want 
the player to be able to change the name of their character, or if you've decided that you want to rename one of your characters, you don't have to go in and find and replace every place where you type that character's name. You can just replace the variable at the beginning. Variables are awesome, but they can be even more useful when they are paired with the conditional macro. This macro allows us to change the text on a passage based off of a logical comparison. It's going to need some setup, so bear with me for a moment. First, we're going to go over to our welcome passage. Here, we're going to need to create another variable to track if the player has a key or not. So we're going to have set has key equal to false. You'll notice that we do not have double quotes around the value false. This is because this is a Boolean value rather than a string. Booleans are used in logical operations. And we'll see this more in a moment when we get to our conditional macro. Now we're going to have a hub that connects our door passage with our search for the key passage. So the player can see both passages out of order. And we'll get to why in a moment. Now in our search for key passage, all we have to do is set the value has key equal to true. And now we get to the fun part. The conditional macro is where we start seeing more complex logic in Twine games. This lets us change our passages based on a conditional statement. In our case, we want a door that can, can't be opened without a key. To do this, we use the if tag. There's a lot happening here, so let's unpack it. The if macro takes an expression that returns true or false as an argument. If it is true, it'll do whatever it encapsulates. And if it's false, it will skip whatever it encapsulates. To do this, we often compare two things using the conditional operators. Double equals signs is used for equals as, single, as a single one is used as the assignment operator. The first line we have here is if the variable has key is equal to true, we'll do whatever's next. Next, we have a simple link to the next uh, to a new passage. This will only display if the expression is true; otherwise, nothing will happen. And the third line closes the if statement. Macros that modify pas the passage text directly often encapsulate the text in which they're going to modify with opening and closing tags. Now let's give this a try and see what happens. We'll hit play. And so we can see Rob is about to embark on a great and noble quest to unlock the door across the room. Unfortunately, he needs to find the key first. So if a store stands before Rob. We can try to open the door, but since we don't have a key, it just says, there's a locked door here, so we'll go back. Now let's search for the key. It says you found the key. And when we go over to the door again, it will say there's a locked door here, but there's text that says unlock door. And it congratulates our player for their genius puzzle solving skills. So that's all there is to it. But there's one problem you might have noticed during that demonstration. You might have noticed that there's a lot of blank space on our passages, especially our door passage. This is because Sugarcube does not remove white space when we create a macro. This can be useful in some situations, but in most cases we don't want that. This is where the no line break macro comes in. This macro removes leading and trailing line breaks and replaces other line breaks with single spaces. This can be very useful, especially when you have complex macros that modify text, like conditional statements. So to use this, we just need to use the no BR tag at the start of the text and a closing tag at the end. Let's give this a try. So you can see here, we use the no BR 
at the start of our variable declaration and at the end of the variable declaration here. And we will need to do that for our house key as well, since we did use a variable here. And for our if statement, because it looks very messy when we just have that back and forward displaying on the string. So now if we play test, you see there's no space. We go over here. We try to open the door and you can see there's just our standard one space like we've been using. Switch for the key, one space like we've been using for all of our text. And there we go. Looks a lot cleaner using that no BR tag. So there you have it. A door that needs a key to unlock. As you can see, we can use this for a lot more complex things, like you mean track of player's health, inventory management, and more. Next time we will discuss the Twigo compiler and how we can use it to make Twine games using a text editor for better organization of our projects. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to me on YouTube and following me on Odyssey. If you found value in this video and would like to give value back, please consider donating using the links below. Thank you.